This episode is brought to you by Hub24, whose purpose is to connect advisors to innovative solutions that create opportunity. They're massive supporters of advisors, in particular those going solo, uh, and they're one of the early players in the managed account space, and, and their epic functionality in that area, as well as their commitment to user experience, has led them to become a market leader in terms of advisor satisfaction. I can speak from personal experience when I say their BDM team are total legends, and they're there to help you work through the best solutions for your business. So you can check out more information at hub24.com.au. This episode is also brought to you by Centuria, who are a boutique ultra high performing fund manager. They've won pretty much all the awards there are to win. Uh, They've got a bunch of five star rated funds and they're heavy into technical support for advisors around their products and strategies. On top of that, they're just an awesome group of people and they've got a dedicated team there to support you. And if you haven't already spoken to the guys at Centuria and heard about what they do, do yourself a favor and reach out. G'day, g'day. What are you doing? Strike a light. This is Clayton with the Paddy. What's happening, my man? Mate, just all pumped about everything. All right, we just had 1,700 people um, tick over in the Facebook group. We did. Yes, I noticed that. Do you remember for the first 1,000, we'd celebrate every 100? It was like, mm. we've hit 100, yay. We've hit 200, yay. Yeah, 300, like, 400, 500. It's and like we, when you have your first birthday. It's like, oh, this is so cool. Yeah, yeah. We got to 1,000 and we're like, mm, I think we better stop doing this. It's getting a little old. Yeah, and just, I guess, like, you can have lots of people in there, but I guess the, the thing that, I guess, Clay... Uh, uh, watches constantly is just the value like uh like we're just always wanting to see value and if we've if like quantity doesn't equal quality necessarily um like some of the like people are people jump in and add value to each other and Mm. it's just it's such a weird thing that facebook group because as financial advisors we live under so much compliance that basically in our free times we just want to be left the hell alone. Um, and and it was a real it was a real kind of struggle uh, with what kind of guidelines, what kind of rules that we should put in the group. We always we lent towards uh, no rules for so long. So for two years, two I don't know if everyone knows this, but for two years we held the group on LinkedIn. <laughs> And there was no rules. It was just anyone uh, posts. And there was no engagement. And there was zero <laughs> engagement. So all that ended up happening was it became a news aggregation site, a place for people to post their own blogs. Um, Mind you, LinkedIn was not healthy. Like their yeah, algorithm was yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. they picked up the game because they realized that, oh, you could actually yes. bring in the good content. Yeah, too. correct. So, um yeah, LinkedIn, LinkedIn's improved a lot, but certainly the purpose of the XY Advisor group for two years on LinkedIn was to create an environment for people to share, but no one did. Hmm. Really, it just became this sort of post an article. Um, and what do you think? What do you think was the reason? I think it's just because that's pretty typical. Uh, uh, people just like to post articles. Is it because LinkedIn's like a bit more of a sort of boring space it's a bit more sort mm. of uh everyone's always polishing themselves up before they put something on linkedin it's a very yeah look, image focused looking good without actually being authentic sort of environment yeah uh, definitely i think linkedin was a factor but the fact that we were the laziest moderating team that's ever existed for two years meant meant that we ended up with bad results and then we sort of went away and did all this facebook group training or at least some of us did, and uh, I learned from you. Clay. <laughs> and uh, it turned out that the healthiest online communities and groups were those with not heaps of rules, but a couple of rules, and then those rules were enforced uh, pretty strictly by the rule Nazi. By okay, I claim <laughs> <laughs> well, thankfully, it's not me anymore. Thankfully, it's me. It hasn't been. But it actually, self regulates. Yeah, days. yeah. So it was it was a problem up until about a thousand, and then we realized at that point it was impossible for us to do it. 
and uh, we, we've had different uh, moderating teams over that time. Mm. Um, but certainly the, the community flagging and reporting posts makes our job a lot easier because simply like, no one has time to read up to and above 300 comments a day. Mm. That's just, you know, not every day has that many, but it certainly spikes to be above 300. And that's just an impossibility. No one can be expected to do that. So, uh, yeah, there's a, and we can tell how many um, non comment engaged people are out there as well. There's a, yeah, there's, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's always interesting to see um, how many people are actually just consuming the content and getting yeah. value out of it. And yeah, it, it, so, so out of a group of 1,700, 1,100 uh, recently have been going on every day uh, within a 24 hour period. Within a week, um, there's eighty five percent of the group uh, within a month, ninety percent, and over two months, ninety five percent of the people go onto the group. So, um, yeah, look, th- that's really high levels of engagement. Um, and our commitment is that we continuously make sure that it's moderated well. And mm. we had heaps of awkward conversations at first. Ooh, yeah, heaps. That was, yeah, yeah, that was yeah. Intense. Yeah, it was. It was. And um not always seeing eye to eye, okay? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But eventually um we we've landed on I think there's about seven or eight different guidelines on the group itself. Um which well, logic prevailed, as in what you wanted to happen, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, precisely. <laughs> and, um, and so, uh, yeah, so now there's not so much, uh, you know, every, everything's pretty clear and, and, and the culture is, you know, keeps everything mostly in line. If we let the ball drop, you know, if people unbeknownst to them are sort of breaking the rules and posting things that aren't get meant to be posted and, and, and we aren't flagged and it, it doesn't turn up, you know, in, in our checks and balances, occasionally things get through and then, What's awkward is that a lot of people have seen it, mm. uh, you know, the, the breach of this particular guideline, and then it, it, it really descends quite quickly. Well, if they see it and then it gets deleted a bit later, then... Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. If something's up for a day or maybe two days before... Because the way, like, the group doesn't necessarily put the most recent thing up the top. And so if yeah. you might go on, you might not see something because mm. of the algorithm for a couple of days. What's the thing around, like, um, like with the events? We keep on having people go... I didn't even know the yeah. event was on because we put it up on the back. Didn't you see the banner up the top? Like, and so many people are just coming in to the group when they see their other Facebook friends yes. uh, make a mention and then they'll come in, check it out, have a bit of read, comment, and out they go. So they sort of yes. miss anything that's sort of pinned or... Yes, which which makes it difficult. Ob- obviously, a lot of people are still seeing it, but uh, there is absolutely an issue with us uh Connecting with everyone, especially when there's an event on, because you're right, yeah, uh, uh, the group is is great for communication, but it's not perfect. Mm. Um, the way to get around that is to use text messages, and we've opted to not use text messages. So mm. we don't text anyone anything purely based on the fact that it's a little bit intrusive. But we're open to um, any feedback if anyone says, ah, oh, take my mobile number, I'm happy to... Receive a text yes. to let me know what's going on. I don't know. I'd be interested to know what people think about text messaging, you know, in or general. Even, even Messenger on Facebook as well. Yeah. Facebook Messenger. Now, because basically XY Advisor is just uh, think of it in the same way as you'd think about it, your own financial planning business. You know, do you text your clients? Do you text your um, potential do. clients, do you contact them? And we've we've sort of erred on the side of not being intrusive, but I don't know. I don't know if that's um, if that's the best way moving forward. We'll let the people decide. Well, how do we let the people decide, Patty? What do you suggest? Tell us if you're listening. If anyone listens to the podcast out there, well, a thousand people a week do, mate. So Sweet. what 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 are you asking them? How do you want us to let you know what's going on? Because, um, yeah, stuff's going to be happening and you don't want to miss out. Because so. you're a fan of the, the the text message, aren't you? Oh, I used to be. I'm, I'm really like, once we started looking at bots and stuff with after Stuart Bell's session and then mm. started looking at um, these bots and they're bloody cool. Mm. Like they're, 
they can sort of um we've got the uh the event now you can actually go into it and like get your ticket all inside messenger like it's it's really cool so is that being set up now yeah yeah so when you click on the event now you don't actually go out of facebook you just like you don't go to eventbrite landing page it's actually eventbrite inside facebook so right. Really smooth, frictionless experience, which uh, is um, and that's on the Facebook page or the Facebook group. That's uh, that's on where we the- post an event, I believe. Yeah, and on the page, like it's 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 actually integrated wherever you actually place I- events of Facebook is integrated with um with Eventbrite now. So right. So wherever we land, place an event, then people can sort of if they click through the event, that'll just take them through that journey. And understood. Yeah, it's interesting. So have we actually done that for this event coming up. For sure. Have yeah. we? Yeah. We've got an event set up. Oh, we've got an event. Yeah, yeah. Like, and but I mean, <laughs> event messenger. set up in Messenger. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. How's it's that cool, going? Ah, eh? oh, it's cool. Have we've, we rolled it out? Oh, it's just there. People it's are clicking just on there. it. It's there. I have to check the stats. See how, how many people do, are actually wh- using. Where, it. where do they click on it? Well, it, like it's integrated with events. You know, you post the event in the Facebook group now, right? Or like traditionally, yeah. That when people click through that, it goes through the messenger now. Okay. And then also, if you go through any other location, whether it's on the page, um, yeah, it's sort of yeah. I don't know. This is all cool stuff. Worth having a crack, seeing if people. Right. So we're using bots. Okay. So if someone texts us through Messenger. They're not talking to us anymore. They're talking to a bot. Well, don't know if we've worked that out yet, refined that yet. Okay. They're still talking to Emily, really. Um, right. Which is good because I think... Uh, well, Emily- em, yeah, em, Em's an awesome, awesome community manager. Oh, if I was going to talk to anyone next why I'd talk to Em. Like- yeah, same. <laughs> <laughs> There's no, no question there. Um, so, groups, event, if we, uh, probably by the time that this goes live, uh, the Brisbane event would have happened. So, let, let's chat about the Perth event. Mm. I think Exciting. First event in Perth. Yeah. It's a long bloody way, but uh, yeah. it's a good place. Looking forward to uh, Fremantle Brewery. There's yeah, definitely. Little creatures. It's uh, yeah. the home of little creatures. I think uh, I think we're all going to be um, we're all making the jump over to Perth uh, for this one, but we've probably bitten off more than we can chew as far as events this year. We're doing one pretty much every single month this year. Yeah, all over Australia. It just gets ah, oh, it, it happens, but it doesn't happen easily all the time, um, especially when you want to make sure the content's good. <laughs> I love, like, I love it. When, when, when you sold the idea of an event every month, you're like, oh, they're easy. They're just easy. And then uh, and then talking to Em, she's like, no, they're not easy. They're really hard. Ah, oh, she's, she's getting better at it. It's getting easy. By the, by it's the end easy of the for year, you because you don't have to do anything. Hey, I, uh, <laughs> I liaise and uh, assist. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and our, our membership portal. The uh, the XYU. XYU, yeah. What's going on? When's when's this coming out? It looks really pretty. It looks amazing, um, but we haven't launched it yet. Wow, it what's could going launch on? by now. We could definitely have launched it by now. No, I mean, just... like by the time this goes out, like it could be like people could be looking at it while they're listening. Fair enough. Fair enough. I, I believe it's just xyadvisor dot com, right? Oh well, that's the current website. Yeah, but no, the new no, one will. Yeah. The new one will essentially just get replaced. So we're getting rid of our sort of useless. You know, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. It's a nice billboard of what we do. <laughs> right. <laughs> it does. People don't know about XY Vise. They look it up. And it says, does what absolutely what it nothing. Is. Yeah. But anyway, so by the time, uh, by the time that this podcast comes out, there's a very good chance that XYAdvisor dot com will be the new online portal of XYU. Yeah. Yeah. Like a new gateway to cool shit. A new gateway to cool shit. I've been wanting to heaps of stuff. Is that is that it, that's the tagline? That's yeah. the tagline. Yeah. A new gateway to cool shit. No, no. X Y U. Your gateway to cool shit. <laughs> why, why do I feel like? Is it good that, that we send that the and worst the tagline you? of is all it? time? <laughs> it's the real deal. <laughs> Are you denying it's it's not going to be cool shit? No, it's going to be awesome. But I, yeah. Look, obviously, Patty, that is not the tagline. What is the tagline? Do we have a tagline? Mm. Is there a tagline? Well, that's your department. It is my department, isn't it? XYU, uh, <laughs> you get away from cool shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. 
It's catchy, isn't it? <laughs> Mate, I have no... I don't know what no, you'd rhyme yeah. it with. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> have some jingle. Have some jingle. But uh, yeah, we've got some, like, there's going to be some cool courses in there. Mm, and just, mm. I've got all these ideas that I'm not allowed to put in there yet. Yeah, until yeah, yeah. We'll build it out. First of all, it's education. Then it's going to be uh, sort of a resource, a, a, a a, a better, um, a more searchable function for, for the Facebook group, right? Yeah, I reckon like sort of, because I think one of the challenges with the Facebook, it's great for having a conversation and activity, but mm. I guess a lot of people really struggle with, like if you think about how much content's gone through, yeah. like the search function, it ain't Google inside Facebook, that's for sure. <sighs> yeah, no, yeah. A lot of the stuff is really difficult to find. And even, and some of the best value is in the files section. Like some of the stuff people yeah, yeah, will yeah. have like shared. If you haven't seen it yet, go check out the file section. Yeah. Because files it's just tab. Got, it's a tab files within tab. the group. Yeah. Yeah. It's just got awesome, just awesome content, client engagement material, yeah. just different ways. Like some advisors are really using the group as a sort of a beta test of new concepts that they're thinking of. And yeah. I, yeah, it, it's. I think it's been working really well and helping people get insights into why others are thinking, but then also helping um, whoever's sharing because they're getting feedback. And I think that's a great, that's a really good function. When people are crowdsourcing ideas on how they're doing things, mm. I think that adds value to everybody. So mm. don't be shy. Throw stuff out there. Ask for a review. Like, what do you got to lose? What, someone goes, oh, you could add this and that? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because cool. mo- mo- most most posts uh, pick up quite a number of uh, comments. Uh, my uh, one of the most liked posts that I've seen free- uh, recently is um, Sam Hendo, Sam Henderson's uh, on air <laughs> calling <laughs> Bill Shorten a goose. Yes, because <laughs> he's um, yeah some uh, flagged. Uh, Ideas for change in the yeah. franking space. Frank getting rid of franking credits. Is that basically it? Was nah, I don't think. It, I think it's the um, the uh, not the full franking. It's like a. It's the cash refund bit. So I think you know when right. like you're in the pension phase and it's just like free money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's not really free money. Technically, it's all legit. It, you know, the company is paid thirty percent, but the tax environment that owns that dividend mm. is actually zero percent. So mm. you should get that thirty percent back. Carry through. How is that? That is totally legit. Are you gonna call Bill Shorten a goose? Bill Shorten, you are a goose. There we go. That's Done. the most political event in a while. <laughs> Actually, we- I did say to M to reach out to Turnbull and see if we can get him in. That'd Turnbull, be cool. Turnbull, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we're, we've we've done Mr. quite well to, to to never discuss politics, so it's probably not a uh, a great idea to start now. The other one was really cool. Imagine if we got Joe Hockey in. How cool would that be? The ex oh, treasurer. He'd be fun, I reckon. Just big old cigars. Yeah. Just I don't puffing know if away. Get away with that in here, but yeah, probably not. Probably not. It'd be a good chat, I reckon. Mate. Especially with oh, XMPs are so cool. Like they're just, they're we, not restrained anymore. Johnny Howard, uh, Johnny Howard and Bob Hawke. Yeah. How good are those dudes? <laughs> well, Bob Hawke, like, yeah, you got to get just. Man, I wish I could go drinking. Certain skills that, um, yeah, not everyone has. Bob Hawke and Johnny Howard, I would love to go drinking with just the both of those not boys. Not kidding? No. No. No, he's not going to get you excited. No. What about what about Beasley? <laughs> <laughs> He'd be all right. He'd probably like a... Oh, talking about ex, um, almost um, like deputies. What about Barnaby? He likes a drink. He could... <laughs> he be, loves a good he'd drink. Be good. Actually, he'd be he on gets the on the muck up clearly. He'd be good on the podcast. Jesus. Actually, Jesus, maybe we should, kind of. he's he's sort of being freed up with his time. Maybe we should invite him on. The beetroot himself, the dog hating beetroot. We're not going to get him on with that talk. <laughs> 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 the beauty is that maybe like a lot of people don't listen to it before they come. We'll on, just so. tell him that a, a new staff member uh, has recently joined, and, sh- and he'll uh, he'll. Oh, uh, <laughs> Come on, Clay. I'm the I'm the one that's meant to be inappropriate. Right. Yes. Well, he's a low blow. Obviously, his uh, behaviour was very inappropriate. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, moving on from politics. Um, so, what's going on with your business anyway? This this new this new startup you got going on. Oh. How's it all coming together? We're just looking at how to add value. It's pretty cool, but right. 
across the uh, financial services spectrum. We, we, yeah, go into it a little bit more. So including accounting. Yeah, accountants, uh, linking in with advisors and then also bringing in uh, other financials like mortgage broking and general insurance and making it really accessible. Like the, uh, there's so much stuff that you can do around. Like if you think about all the stuff that um, we're everyone's trying to adopt and move forward with in advice. A lot of these other areas as well, they're in the same state. There's a lot of scope for making experiences of the advisor, broker, accountant uh, more frictionless mm. and the client at the same time. So, like, it's, yeah, text, it, it gets me excited. Because we both started out with a little sole practice uh, financial planning business and then... We've basically both almost retired from that as well. It was like it was like the first iteration of our financial planning businesses. We kind of went, ah, oh, actually, it's just it's the classic business. And then being as exposed as we are to to the X Y advisor community and learning as much as we have, mm. we probably learn as much as anyone in the community, right? Well, it almost started because we were just curious about what everyone else was doing. Yeah, correct. And that hasn't changed at all. And from everything we've learned, we've kind of pivoted, so to speak. Oh, yeah, exactly. Like, uh, I guess Caitlin who was on previously when we, that'd be a great podcast if it hasn't come out yet. Mm. If it has, go check it out. Um, yeah, talking about just entrepreneurs being crazy. So, uh Yes, there is certainly that. I, I, fi- I find financial planners aren't too crazy, though. Well, They're not too different bad. Different types of financial advisors. There's ones that are really good at just nailing nailing their scope. And there's ones that want to see what they can do around that predefined environment. Well, what, what do you think is the best financial planning business model out there? Whew. Yeah. Big That's question. Tough. Mm. Okay, I'll go first. I'll go first. All right. Just I'll let you think because I've thought a little bit about this. Mm. Um, I think it is the lifestyle slash cash flow slash investment slash property uh, company mm-hmm. that's uh, that's very focused on everything besides what's inside a, a superannuation fund and, a, and an insurance fu- uh, policy and charge above $5,000 for initial advice mm-hmm. and above $5,000 for ongoing advice. Mm-hmm. And those clients don't necessarily have to have, uh, you know, a million dollars in assets, but they typically earn $150,000 plus. Mm. That's, to me... That is a bit of a sweet spot as far as being able to add value to someone's life through what you offer and then earn value from your clients. Mm. Because if you look at the other one, which is ultra high net worth, Mm. that space is very, very... um, uh, Saturated? Saturated, yeah. You know, every, every man and their dog... Basically, you know, anyone that's been an advisor for a long time, basically, they've all got that market covered. Mm. It's going to be very hard to start a business and to, to enter into that uh, into that world where you're picking up clients at $20 million. Um, and then well, charging. And it's, and it's also a different proposition. It's a very well. different proposition, Most yeah. people aren't equipped to deal with clients like that. Because well, it's oh, yeah. Yeah. You, you, I majority. Mean, like, yeah. oh, I, don't, I don't think what they do is... Spectacularly, that what different. you go from a client with five hundred thousand to one with twenty million. I don't think it's particularly that different. If you're just doing asset management, well, that's... which is pretty typical old school financial advice. Oh yeah, but you were talking about like mm. cash flow and different sort of things. Well, you're dealing with different structures. Well, specifically, that's why I talked about net worth mm. and not cash flow mm. because. Yeah, the, that that space of retirees and 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 you know multiple millions of dollars is definitely more than saturated, and it's going to be very hard to to walk into that. But there is a massive underserviced um, population for those people that uh, are earning twice the average, mm. because it, it you know especially in Sydney that happens far more frequently than you'd imagine. 
what people earning like say 150k above. Yeah, yeah, it's got what's well, biggest population, so it's got more. Yeah, the, there's. It's a big, it's a big number of people, and then you get um, the other option is to go down to the mums and dads, mm. um, who who are you know combined income eighty k um, or less, and then it's it's harder, it's harder to uh, it, it's not hard to add value. It's really easy to add value, but it's hard to charge, yeah, and it's hard to it's hard to value your own time. Well, this is where tech comes in. So I got a dream, Clay. Well, here you go. So, I got a dream. So, so that's that was my opinion, right? Mm. On, on on the best um, business model. What's obviously there are people like Peter Diamantides who have um, uh, Caboodle, mm-hmm. um, who are who have a business model that take care of that um, low income space. Not for all the clients, but she's got a, a real streamlined process on how to add value and so i'm definitely not saying it's not possible Mm. but is that what you were alluding to Mm, i was there's a there's a few that i'd articulate but in terms of i reckon there's a what you've got is a high touch model where you charge more and that's like you're spending more time with clients so you're justifying charging more um often dealing with more complexity Mm. but then you come into less complexity and more uh, and same level of touch, um, interest in advice, um, uh, but the not not the the disposable income to pay for advice is is lower. So it, you you come into a difficult business scenario where you're going. Well, you got people you want that want to deal with you. You want to deal with them, but how do you make it economical? And mm. I just think tech is the way. It's sort of. Like there's automation and then there's, um, I guess, enablement of what would be seen as a high-touch experience through technology. Well, what kind it. of tech are you talking about here? Well, like I, so through the advice process, like um, having, I guess, having a team, and this is maybe the structure of advice businesses, having people in your team that can add a certain level of value that goes up to the advisor space is really important, I think, to sort of um, keep on elevating, making sure the advisor's pushed as high up the value chain as possible at all times. And often, like, it, it's more challenging to have a business where the advisor's sort of playing a broader scope of um, delivery. So where they're reaching into administration, they're reaching into research, they do all the client contact. And when you've got that situation, without charging a lot of money, it's hard to match up with that time spent and, and it makes it challenging to sort of... Uh, well, what tech would you use to get around that? Well, to start with, um, yeah, just it's all digital. You got to you get data digital, you can names. do what you want with it. I want brand names. I want brand names. Yeah, what, what, kind of, what kind of tech are you using? Well, you just use use online forms. Like? Well, you can use JotForm, Typeform, okay. Formstack. Okay. Um, depending on your CRM um, because the thing what that... What CRM do you use? Well, I use Practify. Practify? Okay. Yeah. And um, and then I plug into other specialized services like, like Midwinter. What? Midwinter. Vice Oz yep. and others. There's lots of... Um, what else? Well, I've got um, My Prosperity feeding through at the moment. What something. do you get My Prosperity to do? Um, gives the data. So the thing is like I, I suppose we've orchestrated a bit of a way where you can you can... Sign someone up to my prosperity in the or any of these money brilliant money soft in the fact finding process, and you can make use of that historical twelve month data to orchestrate uh, what the expenses profile is, um, which mm. to me historically when I've tried to do like you've done you've got to do that with clients it's it's one of the biggest pain points. Right. So you're you're saying you like to have clients that come in. Uh, they can do the fact finding process, and and what in a very early stage in the process, you can tell them what their ex- historical expenses have been. That's well, kind of cool. So you're doing that before they even become a client. You say, well, this is your current situation. This is where you've been spending your money. No, they've committed to. It's like oh, the second okay. meetings in between oh, okay. the first and second meeting. Okay, okay. So and well, then, that'd be kind of cool if people could do that pre, pre becoming. Yeah, a well, it's, it's sort of. I think it's about if you've got really good engagement before your first meeting, you could orchestrate that. It depends how you run it. If you if you have 
less touch points before that first meeting, then you probably don't want to put anything in front of it. Yeah, I, I think I think a lot of touch points pre first meeting is is the way to go. Mm. Um, I, I was reading on the on the Facebook group the other day. Some people like to charge an initial uh, uh, like an initial meeting fee of mm. uh, seventy dollars. I believe that w- that was getting thrown around. You could you could use that seventy dollars to fund sort of a first month uh, of uh, my prosperity. Mm. You you could get those people to come in, and so when they come in before they're even a client, you could tell them this is where mm. the money is being spent, and you could show them how that differs from say an ideal uh, client scenario. Uh, benchmarking is benchmark, something that yeah, that's, a lot of people that specialize in. That's kind of cool to show people what the issue is your before they even situation. become a client. Mm. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, these these personal uh, finance apps or, or portals. Um, yeah, the data that they're bringing in is enabling. Yeah, it's, it's reducing friction in the client data gathering experience for the advisor and the client, mm. and it's also, I guess, enabling uh, a bit more accuracy um, of intel sometimes. Um, like you just you've got. It's another tool. So a lot, a lot of some practices use it from a prospecting standpoint. So my prosperity, my prosperity. These other like money brilliant, etc. The prospecting tool. Yeah. Well, you got a free version that doesn't get the data feeds. Right. So, and even if if you you can make the function for people to upgrade and instead of having a so if someone's gone down the journey to upgrade their account, that's engagement. So mm. maybe you don't mind paying. Like giving them one month free just to. Well, that's like 20 bucks or something, not even. 10 yeah, bucks it's under that. Depending yeah, yeah, on which yeah, yeah. one you use, between 10 and 20 bucks. Yeah. So if you're charging $70 for an initial meeting fee, that's funded. Right there, it's funded. Oh, it depends what you want to fund. You might be funding the cost of the software. What about your own time? Well, are you charging for an ar- initial meeting? No. Well, there you go. Oh, I'm not saying it. I'm not saying that's the way to go. I'm just saying like other people are talking about like two, $300 fee for the first meeting. It's an interesting concept. It depend. It really depends. Yeah, because obviously, you know, for for example, uh, X Y Advisor charges forty dollars, give or take, for an event event cost. Mm. Now we use all that money to then spend it on booze, uh, booze and, and food anyway. Food too. Food too. Yeah, food too. Um, but but we originally started doing that to increase the numbers of those that would turn up. So the the story mm, goes. The buy in. Yeah, paying. yeah. If you if you give away free tickets, you get a massive non show. So we've always charged. I think we started at thirty dollars, went to forty. I think we went up to fifty at one stage, and we've brought it back down to forty. We're just like, okay, look, forty dollars pays for everything. You sort of you, you're leading me to think into like that one to many advice client approach. Mm. So mm. we've talked about like, um, I guess maybe a more traditional model where yeah, you, you're dealing with you got your practice, you're getting referrals, etc. From people, then there's some businesses that have more corporatized referral relationships where they might be aligned with accounting firm, with a mortgage broker and that sort of thing. And those are some of the best advice businesses as well because they get, get getting fed clients. But if you look at some of those businesses, you're not necessarily always controlling what type of client you get. Right. And this is where this is where some businesses really nail it because they they go through the marketing channel or the one-to-many engagement channel. And this is sort of where um, by what you throw out there is what you attract. Yep. So like when you um, when we talk about niching, it's the people, it's like what um, Lee showed her. She, she throws out the wellness, the um, uh, relationship with money, and that's what she gets. She gets people that want that. Yes. And that's what you attract in. Yes. Um, like Adele Martin, another yep. another good example. Um, the way this she puts what she puts out there in terms of value, uh, building the trust, um, the style of the personality that's put out in your branding as well, then also defines the people. Yeah. So you're starting to really curate a stream of a similar sort of because it just, people self-select. If you think about just how like. I go into a meeting room and you go into a meeting room. People self-select. Well, I'm going to get the client every time. <laughs> sure. <laughs> They're going to walk out and be like, who is this monkey? Who is this Adrian Patty? This hairy gorilla? <laughs> I like him. <laughs> <laughs> he seems cool. Um, and then they're like, who's this, who's this sort of? Upstanding bloke, he looks a bit too serious. Taking himself way too seriously. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, it's that personality bit. I think mm. if you talk talk about um, like any of these channels, it's still 
that still comes through with how you communicate. Um, it's yeah, it's it's personality is the business is to an extent. Like obviously it's what you're delivering, but at the same time people buy people with from people they like. Yeah, well, of course. And uh, yeah, you, you're halfway there if they like you. One thing that I think advisors have never focused on, to my to my knowledge, is um, spending money. Um, we don't really talk about how to help people get the most out of what they spend. I think that's a really cool concept that there is. There is room to help people get the most out of the money that that they spend. Well, it's a good way to lose clients. I I did that a bit. What um, was that? Well, clients, young young people in their twenties wanting to be serious, and then I'm like, have you thought about traveling? What about traveling? Like seriously, <laughs> come on, come on. Why do you want to buy a house for? Like, that's boring. <laughs> uh, you're still young. Well, yeah, and, that's and no, that, actually, that's that whole lifestyle. And this, this hasn't been a recommendation. Thing. I've just been like pokered and just like, guys, come yeah, on, yeah, like yeah. I'm trying to save them, like making the wrong decisions. It's like, think about, think about how cool it would be to be overseas. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, I, I, I lost a couple of clients to to overseas travel as well, and to moving overseas definitely because I was sort of in their ear quite a bit. And that, that's, I, yeah, let's lifestyle management, you know. Mm. It, it's um okay is there are you going to miss a, an important part of your life pu- just purely based on um you were over planning too young mm. uh and then you know on the opposite side it, it's uh it's a case of or are you not planning enough and so yeah. overspend or under mm. underspend or? overspend and un- underspenders yeah, yeah yeah but i but when it, coming back to the spending of money um you know it, we can all we can all sort of help people allocate 300 bucks or whatever a week to spend on themselves um but we don't really do a lot as far as helping them get the best bang for buck right so by that i mean you know like do you ever help people negotiate a better electricity contract not electricity no Mm. even though you can get a 40 percent reduction right now just by calling up Energy Australia and saying Origin Energy approached me. Well, like on that note, now we're talking about the data feeds and the the personal finance apps. Yes. That's the space that they're now able to move into. What do you mean? Well, if there's certain transactions, if you've got a uh, Energy Australia bill, yep. your transaction line's going to be this. Yep. And if you can then pick that up and go, this is a bill. Yeah. Um, and then if you know that there's a more cost competitive versus the standard rates there, you can compare what people are paying to and just throw it up in front of them and give them the opportunity to. But you can literally call, you know, Energy Australia and within 15 minutes get a 12 month discount on your electricity just by calling them. I've ne- I never did that with a client, but, but it's kind about, of strange. But that yeah, we don't. absolutely. Well, think about it just being prodded to do that. Like at least that. Think about that value being added. Did you know if you've lived in a house for two years, you, you can get you own it. No, well, no you can oh. get Energy Australia to give you to to give you a flat electricity bill. What for life? Well, up until you move again. If you've been in a place for two years, they can give you a fixed cost electricity bill. What does that? How's that look? Like what? What, so you just, as long as you stay there, you get the same rate? Yep. Nope, didn't know that one. Yeah, because I was looking, yeah, electricity, I, I mean, I, I don't want to sound like I'm stuck on this electricity bill, but it's mm. a, it's it's a, it's has definitely- your, Has your power bill gone up recently? <laughs> no, it did, hence why I did a lot of, a lot of researching <laughs> into this. Um, but there's all these ways to help people spend money that we don't focus on mm. for whatever reason, even though it's a key part of someone's life. What sort of spending? You know, um, what, what happens if someone likes to go traveling? Are we, are we sending these people deals? You know, like someone travel was, deals. Yeah, I just feel like there's a whole space that that um, oh, that we're not entering into. We definitely got to watch this space because like, when we were talking about before about linking up different financial services and making them frictionless, think about the experience people go through when they're going to get general insurance or when they're going to get. Um, home and contents or they're going to get car finance it's this experience where it's sort of it's at a level where like you're generally dealing directly with a product provider 
So what that means is it puts you into maybe I've got to, oh shit, I've got to do some research online. You end up with one of these sort of, like we had Finder on the other week, end up somewhere like that or other websites comparing. But then you sort of still need to go in and get the exact quote around your certain circumstances. And then you want to check another one. And all of a sudden you've spent like hours getting something that maybe will cost 700 bucks right. a year. Um, and you think about that from a standpoint of what we could add value to is removing that experience. So, and the issue that's going on there is that like off these lower value um, services, it doesn't justify having that um, professional broker sort of experience going on. But what you can do is make use of technology to facilitate. What technology? Online forms. <laughs> Online forms. <laughs> yeah. Because the information required to deliver um, some of these services compared to advice is much more, especially if you combine it to how much information you have as an advisor. So if you've got certain client information, they need a certain segment more, um, you've then got a situation where you only have to ask this amount of information if you're, you're solid on the information that you've got. You then can then create an experience with the client's permission around privacy, et cetera, to then pass that information on behalf of, on behalf of the client to a next destination, which could be a facilitated service that gives um, a broking experience where their personal situation is taken into consideration, even in the lower value um, general insurance space or car finance space. And they're getting an outcome without paying extra, probably paying less compared to... So you're talking about Finder? Um depends because you still you still sort of because the difference is when you find is there's no person involved is there well that's your point right that technology take care of it well it's not completely taking care of people it's it's almost going into that sort of bionic space in that like it's not fully automated right. there's an over like you, you've got a bit of an overseeing of like a um like a service provider and just a service provider an intermediary between the products so f- phasia yeah. What's your opinion? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Don't have much to go with. You're just going to... Do we all really want to add like more just stuff into the mix of conversation around that space? Well, it needs to be spoken about because it looks like a lot of advisors are stressing out. It looks like... A, and it's a pretty big deal, you know? Mm. It's almost like it's the bar exam. To become a financial planner and it, and it needs to be sat by everyone. Well, if it was the bar exam, it probably wouldn't be as stressful for people because the difference being in not having certainty about what commitment they've got to do. So a lot of advisors probably wouldn't be as, as stressed out if, if it was just the bar exam. Cool. I'm confident in what I know, what I've done, what I do. I'll be able to sit. That's fine. I back myself. Yep. Um, it's the bit where you might have to do like a year, two years extra study when you're running a business and you've got a whole lot of other family obligations and things like that. That's what's stressing people out. The uncertainty around whether they'll have to take that Cause, obligation. Because I know for a fact Fazio is completely ignoring the AFA and the FPA. They're, yeah. they're, they're working independently of them, which is pretty, pretty crazy, right? When you consider the AFA and the FPA are advisors' voice mm. to... To the, between the government mm. and advisors. Mm. So for them to be completely ignored, I reckon is pretty outrageous. But um, but that's what's happening, mm. right? So I... No, no. Yeah, I, I just... With the accredited courses and things like that, like if you look at the courses validation over um, like how long courses actually stay relevant, some courses more than others, but a lot like... And even you think about how much you retain sometimes when you do a yeah. course. If well, you- someone had their someone has their FPA qualification for more than twenty years, I think, at this stage, something like that. They probably the 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 effort to get it back then was quite low. Mm. And I've only been told this by people who've mm. had you know I didn't go through mm. it myself. I was told this from people who who went through it themselves. Um, and so I guess that's why Fazio has said, well, we can't take the fact that you've got this qualification mm. into consideration because we don't know if you were the, some of the people that went through all the effort mm. to get it or if you were some of the people that didn't go through any or much effort well, to get why, it. This is why maybe the like the single exam could be the way to go for... Well, I think that's that's what they're proposing. Well, right? but without the... 
other things around course requirements. Right. So you're suggesting- Because if you're an existing advisor, especially if you've been going for years, you yeah. n- you know a lot of shit. Absolutely. You know so much. Yes. And it's just, I'd, I'd love to know like what transitions look like in other like industries, whether they said, oh, yep, so you've been doing this for 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> You're now no longer a professional unless you do this. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a big call. But at the same time, like, <clears throat> you know, this, this, this topic of professionalism is one that's been spoken about for as long as I've been in financial advice. Mm. Um, and I guess this is just a line in the sand. And I guess it's going to piss off people. And I guess it, there, there are going to be a lot of people that aren't happy about it. You know, you've got well, <clears throat> someone like Ben who has a degree in financial planning and that's not even on the list of, of a, <clears throat> accredited mind, qualifications. Mind you, I have heard <laughs> the list is building out. Um, as, okay. Yeah, yeah, you can sort of like, they're just gradually adding to it. Right. But it is, it is a good point that highly educated people um, may not even make um, the list. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. That's um, pretty crazy. And... But like at the same time, as as you said, like this this journey and the discussion that's going on in, needs to happen. Yeah. Um, and if we don't have it, the phaser have said if we don't have this conversation, mm. then uh, then it's going it's just going to happen separate to the whole industry. And what's the concept of self regulation versus imposed yeah. regulation? Yeah, yeah. I think there's been plenty of imposed regulation. That's for sure. Yeah, and we know how that looks. Yeah, it's some beautiful. of it's good. It's some of it's good. Some of it's bad. It's beautiful, right? Best interest duty, I think, along with an AFSL, is an absolute ridiculous contradiction. I, I I can't see how those two things coexist. But whereas FOFA getting rid of uh, you know mm. investment um, commissions, I think is probably a good thing. Well, it's a simple. Some of the biggest changes in the way advice is done has been from simple changes. Yeah. Not the more complex prescriptive changes. Yeah. Just simple. Because bid, what, what's bid? Honestly, best interest duty is just qualify in quantitative terms what it is that you're going to do anyway. Uh, what, well, what changes? Arguably hasn't been defined in, um, like, it's still. Well, I just haven't seen much change. I've just seen extra paperwork. Mm. You know, until, until, until AFSLs are gone, then. What? Well, that's that's an interesting space. Yeah, I just don't get it. Mm. I, I, the more I think about it, <clears throat> it's insane. AFSLs are insane. Absolutely. I, ASIC should have what what is a product and what isn't a product. Yeah. And then beyond that, why is there an, an additional level of due diligence? Which if is it, just paid for that, anyway. If it, it meets that base it's level, it's paid of, for anyway, mm. right? To get on a sh- like uh, to get to be, get on the shelf space on these big big uh, dealer groups, mm. you you pay to be there, right? It's not like it's... it's uh, I've heard that may happen. No, but that does happen. <laughs> that does happen. That's not even... I don't even think that's a secret. Um, so uh, there just seems to be... seems to best interest duty in the AFSL to me. Conflict. Yeah. I, there's a lot of noise around where I guess a lot of people can see advice going. And it's sort of... It's just trudging through this journey at the moment where tech's catching up and like communication, um, ways of conceptualizing and engaging with people is catching up with prop- business value propositions. And it's all sort of coinciding that, yeah, the, the compliance will be made easier because of technology. The engagement will be facilitated easier because of technology. The- what, I, what, what bothers me about financial advice is we attempt to just add in layers of complexity without actually changing what we're really focusing on. Mm. And, and it just it, it seems to me that it's remuneration. Remuneration models are what tend to be the hot topic for advisors mm. because as an advisor, you want to you earn as much money as possible. Mm. Obviously, you're, you're like any other person. But uh, on the other side of that is is how do you de- deliver as much value, and so I I just don't see why we can't look at the remuneration models which which get in the road of um, of adding value. Or mm. I and and you know there are these a lot of the things have already been removed. 
a lot of them have already been removed, like uh, investment uh, investment commissions, um, you know, uh, volume bonuses from mm. um, from dealer group level. Mm-hmm. The, there's a lot that's been removed, and and because of all that, I I just can't. Now that those things have been achieved, we should be looking to get rid of the co- those complexities because mm. a lot of that stuff was brought in to try and stop or reduce that. Well, it was built around the product. Yes. And yeah, you take the product incentive out of it correct do you need as much uh, definitely no De- you, you friction can, around the advice process um i was awesome on the group again there was a one-page financial plan turned and i looked at it and i was like yeah you know like, a part, what, are you, someone using it or well no 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 like from back the in the day of, oh, back, back in, in the day. day someone they came across this one-page financial plan and you know it uh, it hasn't a lot changed from that one page, it was just instead of one page, you've got sixty page, and a lot of it is just, um, you know, giving some form of credibility to the decisions that were made. Mm. But if we're removing these conflicts of remuneration, we should be aiming to try and get back to that to one that, page to that one page because that's what we do anyway, right? We do it as SO, and then we go, ah, oh, and then we've got the summary. We've got the summary over here. Mm. We've got the PowerPoint up there. Mm. We're doing it anyway. And it's just, oh, but here's your uh, formal piece of written advice over here. And then sign the ATP just mm. to say you received it. It just, it's, it's, it's such a funny little thing, you know, that, that I it just, a lot of times if you look at it rationally, it shouldn't exist. Time will tell. Time will tell. Anyway, so that that's, that's my little rant, mate. What, what's going on? Oh, you've, that's just I can't back that up. It's uh, <laughs> <laughs> just a bit too much high energy. All right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, um, I, I reckon um, I reckon it's good to throw out new ways of things occurring, and uh, discussions good to have, and like we'd love to see on the Facebook group. Like it's great as long as everyone's sort of uh, constructive, and mm. I guess. Posi- looking forward positively, and that, like that's what we've always tried to do with XY is look forward positively. Yeah, because if you don't, what are you doing? Yeah. Like if you're just complaining about what's going on now well, or in the past, like that's you're yeah. not getting anywhere. The, enough of the industry is focused on the negative. Mm. Enough of the industry is focused on the the finger pointing. Mm. That uh, yeah, we've just tried to be an anecdote to that. To yeah. to, to you know. A, we're not the experts. A, we're the enthusiasts, mm. right? Um, a lot of the times when we, we talk about a subject, it, it comes from a, a desire to learn more and, and oh. to have an opinion that is, you know, somewhat naive. And, um, and well, it represents uh, our exposure to our colleagues. Yes. Oh. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and it's, it's that view that we give, which mm. is, you know, somewhat puerile in a lot of sense. Um, yeah. Bit soapboxy, you might say. Bit soapboxy, uh, a little, you know. Um, we, we've got a few romantic ideals, and, and I think as long as we're focused on that, we are, you know, focused towards driving the positive ev- evolution of financial advice. You know, the rest of the industry can uh, can take care of the the negative stuff. Yeah, the future is bright. The future is bright. Anyway, mate, let's wrap this up. Thanks, guys. Uh, chat soon.